guys, it's Courtney and Umberto with Grey Law TV. Today, hey guys. Hi. <laughs> Today we're going to do um, a mock B1, B2 um, interview at the consulate for you so you know sort of what it looks like, okay? And I'm going to be interviewing as a consul officer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the foreign national who wants to come to the United States. She's begging for a visa. I want so a visa. So. Now, now <laughs> Please this, give me a visa. <laughs> now this particular one is what not to do, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, this is absolutely what you don't want to do in a visa interview. What visa are you seeking to um, come to the U.S. today? Um, a, a visitor visa. A visitor visa? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And do you have a passport? Um, I do. Uh, passport, passport, pass, passport, passport. Okay. Uh, have you previously passport. been in the U.S.? Um, once when I was a kid, we went to Disneyland. My parents took me when I was like five. Um, my my mom and my mom and dad brought me. Do you want their birth certificates? I have their birth certificates here. Ma'am, ma'am, I'll ask you the question. Just answer the questions, okay. please. Um, I see that you've had a visa before. Mm -hmm. And how old were you? Uh, five. Okay. I think. Do you know anyone in the U.S.? Um, yeah, my my boyfriend. Your boyfriend? Yeah. And how long have you known him? Um, like six months. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you plan to be engaged to him? Um, no, I mean, I hope that that will pop the question, but like we met on Instagram and so like we're really just like meeting for the first time. Ma'am, are you going to come back to Brazil after your brief visit to the U.S. if I give you a visa? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And let me finish my question okay. before you answer, please, mm -hmm. please. Um, do you plan to work in the U.S.? No. Do you work in Brazil? Um, not really. I mean, like, I, I do some, like, I bartend sometimes, but, like, mm -hmm. not really. And do you have an education in Brazil? Did you go to school? Yeah. What's your highest grade of completion? Um, I finished high school, mm -hmm. and I did, like, a couple of community college classes. Mm -hmm. Has your boyfriend come to Brazil before? No. When did you meet him? Um, we like we met on we met on Instagram and then we were on um, Twitter because we both love Hillary Clinton and so like he like slid into my DMs and we were messaging each other. Did you see her tweet yesterday? It was amazing. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, like, ma ma please, tweeting li please, ma'am. Lizzo lyrics. It was awesome. Please, this interview is going to be really short. If you continue to interject these things that have no relevance to this interview, do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. So you're not employed. Do you have family in Brazil? Yeah. Who do you have? Uh, my mom. Your mom? Where's your dad? Um, I, I don't know. Okay. What are your plans in the U.S.? Um, I really just want to like meet my boyfriend and like hang out for a couple weeks. And how long do you want to go? Uh, like, mm, like two months maybe. Okay. And do you have documentation to prove that you're going to return to Brazil after the two-month visit? Um, I mean, I have, like, my mom wrote a letter for me, and then my aunt who lives there wrote a letter do you have for the, me. Did you bring that documentation today? Yeah. This is the letter from you can, my mom. You can just hand me everything, please. please. This is totally not in order. I mean... Do you have Do you have evidence of your mom's employment? No, I didn't know I needed that. Okay. And where does your mom work? Um, she works at um, the same restaurant where I bartend sometimes. She's a manager. Okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. I cannot give you this visa. Why? Because you haven't brought the proper documentation. Well, I have like our you, birth certificates. I ma'am, I'm not going to give you the visa today. I'm sorry. You have you don't have the proper documentation, number one. Number two, you've indicated that you have a boyfriend that you want to see in the U.S. And I believe you're going to go there and get married and stay in the U.S. You have no ties to Brazil. You're going to have to get a job or go to college or do something that's beneficial before I'm going to let you go to the U.S. So I can never meet visa. my boyfriend? He can come to Brazil. You don't need a visa for U.S. citizens to go to Brazil. You're so rude. <laughs> Great. No, it was like a real interview, I'm telling you. So that was an interview that went really, really wrong, really bad. Um, 
you have to do the things that we've indicated in previous segments. There's one on the five mistakes, and she's made all five mistakes for a B1, B2 visa. So check out that segment and really, if you're going to go and you're going to try to get a visa, concentrate. Learn these things and avoid these mistakes. But she was really cute though. Yeah, <laughs> resilient. Courtney's always really cute. What do, you, what do you think, Courtney? Any comments? Um, you know, I think that it's really important to be polite, to be personable, to be organized, um, to know exactly what they're going to ask you or what they're likely to ask you so that you can have answers prepared um, in the way that they like to hear it. Um, mm -hmm. They have a long line. They just want to get through it. And if you're it disorganized, even if you qualify for the visa, or if you're rude, they'll deny it mm -hmm. um, because they can't get to the information that they need. So um, make sure you watch our other segments on the B1, B2 visa and you'll be just fine. Hey YouTube, this is Umberto Gray from Gray Law TV. I'm an immigration attorney practicing in the area of entertainment and business. And I've been practicing for a very long time. I've represented celebrities at U.S. consulates abroad. And the one thing that I have found when I'm in an interview, for example, with Salma Hayek, I was there obtaining her O-1 visa. And I notice at the counter mistakes that are made by applicants. So I'm going to share with you the five most common mistakes made at a consular interview. Number one the invitation letter. The invitation letter is not required for a B1, B2 visa at all. In fact, it could hurt you. If you have family members in the U.S. and they send you a letter that, you know, you're going to come to the U.S. and you're going to be with them, that could be problematic because then the consulate thinks you're not going to return. That's a big mistake. It's a myth. You do not need an invitation letter. Number two, please, do not be arrogant, do not be argumentative. These are consul officers and their dream is to be an ambassador and they're stuck at the window doing visa applicants and adjudicating visas. They don't wanna be there. A lot of times they have a chip on their shoulders so if you're arrogant and you're argumentative, that's gonna be a big, big problem. Number three, <laughs> don't be what I call a chatty Cathy. Please, don't talk a lot. They have 300 applicants waiting and you know their time is real short so you really don't want to talk a lot. You want to be attentive, you want to answer the questions, you want to be very specific, don't ramble, don't talk a lot. That's not good. One thing that individuals overlook all the time is their passport validity. You're going to need a passport that's valid for at least six months. Okay, Check your passport before you go to your interview. Make sure you have validity for more than six months. Also, you want to check your visa pages, okay? They have to place the visa on a blank page. So if you've had many entries, you've had multiple visas, sometimes the pages are not blank and they're not able to put the visa in the passport. So you got to check your passport. Make sure, because they can't cover up any of the stamps that you have. You have stamps in your passport. Every entry you make, it's a red stamp. They mark the validity date. That's a problem if there's no room, no space in the passport. I've, again, on many occasions I've had you know, individuals, they just don't have space in their passport and the visa couldn't be issued. So I always make sure that my clients have enough space in their passport for the visa to be placed. And finally, make sure that you are organized. Your joint documentation that you bring to support the B1, B2 visa, you want to make sure that it's in order, okay? You can even have a cover letter that's paginated, Exhibit A, bank statement, Exhibit B, employment letter, Exhibit C, you know, parents letter, um, my spouse's letter. Make sure that they're in order. Do not come to the window at the U.S. consulate and have everything out of order and you hand it to them because what's going to happen, that consular officer is going to hand it right back to you. So make sure that everything is in order. That's going to be very, very helpful. If you avoid these mistakes, you'll definitely get your visa. Thank you for watching Gray Law TV. Click below, like, and subscribe. Hey YouTube, this is Courtney and Umberto from Gray Law TV, and uh, we love 
the questions and answers that we're getting and we're also loving the comments that our videos are helping you get these visas at the U.S. consulates abroad and uh, you know thanks to Courtney you know she has a very good video that has hundreds of thousands of views and it's getting real good traction you might go to that video so here's one comment uh, that was posted this was posted by uh, Funmi firstly I'd like to say God favored me with the visa interview and the secondly this video is so helpful and straight to the point got my visa approval today congratulations for me congratulations so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about B1B2 visas we are okay <laughs> I have to, I have questions that people have sent in sure. but they've they've been about the B1B2 they've been yeah. about marriage they've been about all sorts of things so okay let's so get at it. we're gonna answer your questions you've asked us questions and we're gonna answer those questions today cool. <laughs> you can go Oh, so this one is from Aidy Garcia Diaz. Uh, we've been married for five years so far. We have the appointment next month. I'm very nervous because my husband doesn't speak English fluently. I've heard couples say that they were separated for the questions. If we aren't separated, can I translate for my husband? I assume you're talking about the adjustment of status marriage interview. So typically they don't separate you. Uh, typically you're interviewed together. Every now and again, you know, an officer hasn't had his coffee or her coffee and, and they'll separate you. If you look very different, if he's like super tall and you're super short or there's like a 20 year age gap or something, um, they might um, separate you. Whether you're separated or not, you may not translate for each other, okay? Um, so you could take a friend to translate for you. Um, sometimes uh, USCIS will use a dial-in service if you don't have a translator or they'll ask somebody in the lobby, hey, can anybody, does anybody speak whatever language and can translate for this couple? Um, so it'll be a third-party translator if you take a friend with you um, or, um, you know, a family member or something like that. So if you do that, that person has to be a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident. They have to sh show their, their passport or their green card um, and they can only translate. It's so hard when you know somebody asks a question and you translate it and they don't quite get the answer and you want to help um, and so you're like oh their address they're asking or you know you start speaking instead of just translating um, the officer could get grumpy so make sure that you're just translating it and that you've explained to the person that they are only to translate okay and and sometimes people get nervous and they start making jokes where they start interjecting, which is gonna prolong their interview. And officers don't like that either because they have a long day, okay, and a lot of people to see. So um, somebody, you know, sort of professional and can walk in with you. Otherwise, they'll, they'll help provide one for you. Yeah, just to add to that, mm -hmm. you know, I did a segment on what not to do in an adjustment interview. And one thing to avoid that separation, have your documentation in order. Bring joint documents. Yeah. If you come with a stack of documents, the officer is going to look at it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to say, okay, this might be a real marriage. I'm not going to separate these yeah. things. Yeah, and you're organized <laughs> and you have your stuff together and, you know, you sort of look the part, look like you go together, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we do have uh, videos on um, the marriage interview, um, including one coming up about um, that, that walks you through what it sort of looks like. Hey, that's going to um, be a good one, yeah. yeah. That's going to so, be a good one. So make sure you check those out. Mary Moose, I visited before U.S. for 10 years, many times without a problem. Can I apply for a B2 visa because I love to shop in America? <laughs> <laughs> now you want to make sure she brings her checkbook <laughs> no don't bring your checkbook to the interview <laughs> but you want to bring your bank statements because your bank statements going to be a real good indication that you have a lot of money to shop in America and it's going to support your 214 B requirement that you need to show that you're going to return to your home country mm -hmm. after your shopping in America so have fun at Saks Fifth Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I would add is that this might be one of those places where you want to bring your old passport, show that you've come in and gone Good out point. and yep. in and out and you've never overstayed and you've never had a problem and that's just who you are. You just come and shop because we do have fabulous ones here. <laughs> oh, my turn. Okay. Um, so this one is from Alex Adolfo. I got denied yesterday. On August 21st, I was visiting my uncle's 22-year wedding anniversary. What went wrong? Ooh. I know. Poor guy. I know. 
Um, it's hard to say without more information. I don't know if you had the invitation with you. I don't know if you were able to say that you had a relationship with this uncle. Have you visited before? Did you show that you visited before and exited on time? Has your uncle come to visit you? Do you have you know, family photos, that kind of thing? Do you have the ability to show that you can pay for your trip, your flight? Um, you know, where are you staying? Did you have your uncle's address handy with you? Um, who else in your family is going? Um, you know, when do you plan on coming back? All of those sorts of things. If you had one of those sponsorship letters from your uncle, that's such a myth that you need something like this, um, that may have thrown them off because uh, it, nobody in the United States is supposed to be sponsoring you. You're supposed to be able to care for yourself and show that you can return. Do you have a job? Did you show that you have a home? Did you show that, you know, all of those things that if you check out the B1, B2 interview, uh, um, video on what you're supposed to bring with you and the other video on um, what questions they're going to ask you. Did you did you go through all of those things and show them all of those things? So check out those videos. Uh, maybe try again. It's going to be a little more difficult because they're going to see that it was denied before, but you can say, you know, I didn't have all my ducks in a row last time, but now I have the documents that you need to see. Yeah, don't be discouraged. Wait six months. Try again. Yeah, but the party is soon. He's got to try again now. Well, I don't think he's going to make this party. No, but I want him to go. <laughs> Maybe 25. Maybe yeah. they're like, 22 is not a big anniversary. What's the big deal? Maybe for the 25th 25th, anniversary. you'll be there. Exactly. Yeah, the silver anniversary. Sally Pacheco. Hi, I'm married to a U.S. citizen three months ago. Could I apply for a B2 visa? You can certainly apply for a B2 visa, but I don't think it's going to be approved. Mm. Um, they know that you have an intent to go to the U.S. and you can change your status to get a green card and that could be problematic. You know, you can't satisfy the 214B. What you may want to do if you want to get to the U.S. you know, a little earlier is apply for a K-3 visa. Um, I've done some other segments on that. You can look at those segments. They're really good. You can apply for it. The adjudication time is not so long. Um, but it doesn't hurt to try for the B-1, B-2. Just be very honest. Look, I was married three months ago and I'm going to visit right now. We don't have the wedding plan or the, the wedding is going to be in my home country, whatever the case may be. If you have evidence to support that, bring that to the interview and say, look, I just want to go and visit for a short period of time and I'm coming back and later we'll think about applying for the green card. Well, they're already married, so they're having, like, maybe they're having another ceremony because a lot of people do that. They have the civil ceremony and then they have the... Exactly, the big the, wedding. The big wedding mm -hmm. with all the family and friends and you want everybody there. Anyway, okay. Um, Jason Pasitas. Um, hi ma'am. How about if someone will sponsor you? Does the U.S. Embassy ask me something? Can you please tell me what it is? Thank you and God bless. Okay. As you may have heard us say before, um, the sponsorship thing is a myth, meaning uh, it's not true. You don't want to take a sponsorship letter. Uh, you want to show ties to your home country. The stronger you show your ties are to the United States, the more likely they are to deny your visa because they think that you're planning on immigrating here permanently. You should be able to show um, bank statements showing that you have money in the bank, that you can pay for your flight, that you can pay for your hotel, or if you're staying with relatives, like, you know, I have a free pay place to stay because my aunt is there or what, what have you. Um, but I, I wouldn't take necessarily a sponsorship letter with somebody saying I'm going to sponsor him and I, I'm going to give him financial support with their bank statement. I, I wouldn't do any of that. Now, if you're a young person and um, you know, you're traveling to the United States for a, a couple weeks to visit an aunt and your parents are going to sponsor you, your parents who are in your home country, that's cool to show. You know, you're 20. Sure. I mean, they don't expect you to have tons of money. So yeah, my parents are sending me for a short visit. Um, and then you could show your parents' bank statements, but also show that you have ties to your country, that you're enrolled in school, that you have a job, whatever the case may be. Be sure to check out um, the B1, B2 uh, video for that one, okay? Yeah, and we just did a segment on the five common mistakes at a B1-B2 interview. Mm -hmm. That's the number one mistake, the invitation letter. Don't bring it. Yeah. Don't bring it. Yeah, I don't know why that's so prevalent out there. but It's it, just a big myth, yeah. I mean, and it's circulating. There's some questions here about that. Yeah. Let's take a Elta Barami. Hello, I'm participating in the Microsoft World Championship, and my visa interview is this week. I'm under 18. Should I bring both my parents with me? And what else do I need? So they probably won't let your parents in, but congratulations. 
on your endeavor and I hope you do well in the US. Um, you're under 18 so you will need to bring documentation to show that you live with your parents, that they have enough money to support your trip to the US. I would certainly bring the invitation letter in this instance showing that you were chosen to participate in this event. That's going to be important in this instance. You know, so sometimes, you know, an invitation letter that, that is, is, is something um, that's going to support your application, you can bring. And this is one of those cases that demonstrates, yes, you will bring that letter. And I would only add that once you have your visa, um, your parents can give it a shot. I mean, they could go in and say, my daughter's traveling, she's 17, she's traveling to the United point, States yeah. for this competition, mm -hmm. here's her invitation mm -hmm. letter. I don't want my daughter, you know, thousands of miles from me mm -hmm. um, with, you know, whomever, like I don't know these people, um, these Microsoft people, so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, sorry Microsoft, um, they're wonderful, I love them, okay, anyway, so the Google, the, Google, the Google competition, yeah, because <laughs> they're on YouTube, right? <laughs> Um, so they can they can give it a shot. I mean, all they can say is no, right? And so they're in the same position. It, it never hurts to ask. Um, next question um, from Nani M. Can a person on a tourist visa get married to a U.S. citizen? Oh yes, Nani, you can. Um, um, they really don't like it if you do it within 90 days. They think that when you enter the United States, that maybe you weren't honest with them, um, because when you entered on your uh, tourist visa you have to enter with the intent to return to your home country. So they think, oh no, she didn't tell us the truth or he didn't tell us the truth. She was entering with the intent to get married and to um, stay here. So they really don't love to see it within 90 days. But if you enter and then you change your mind and decide to get married, that's perfectly fine. Okay? That's right, because she got a really nice ring and she couldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is from Sana Albat. If a man already married to a USA citizen, so that um, case, I'm sorry, I'm going to start again. <laughs> um, the font is too small. That's why I use this. The font's really big. <laughs> okay. From this one's. <laughs> Come on, we need our bloopers okay. here, too. From Sanaa, would, but... would you like my glasses? Ha 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 ha. It's very big font. It's just. Have... Okay. Sanaa Abbat. This one's from Sana Albat. Um, if a man is already married to a U.S. citizen, can he sponsor another second wife from his home country? Um, no. Okay. Um, polygamy in, is not cool in the United States, and they will deny your visa. Um, I, it's tough because in a lot of places, it's totally fine, totally normal, and people are married to more than one person. You know, typically it's a man married to more more than one woman. Are there places where there are women married to more than one man? Mm -hmm. Really? I want to go to there. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, so anyway, um, so, sorry, I got totally <laughs> distracted by that one. Um, so it's a grounds for denial. So it's totally normal in a lot of places for, for, to have more than one spouse, to have more than one wife, and to have more than one husband. You said there's places like this? All right. Um, so... But in the U.S., like, the, we're really weird about it. Um, you know, there's some things we're totally free about, and then, like, other things where we're super uptight, and this is one of those places where we're super uptight. So I'm, I'm really sorry because I know, you know, th this is a family. Um, you know, lots of times with kids, and they want to bring their whole family here, and now they have to pick and choose who they get to bring. Um, what Sana asked as a follow-up question because Sana is very smart, um, is can a man sponsor his girlfriend? So, you know, I have one wife and I have a girlfriend. No, they don't like to see that either. Um, there are ways if there are very significant, important people in your household, because not everybody is married, right? So um, if there is a man who has a girlfriend who is not married, um, there are ways for that person to come in on the B1, B2 uh, visa, and you're very honest at the consulate. Like, we, we are in a committed relationship. Maybe you have kids, maybe you don't. Um, he has a work visa here, and so I'd like a B1, B2 visa 
uh, I'd like a B2 visa to come in and, and uh, hang out with him while he's on his work visa and then I'll, I'll go home at the end of it. And you can go back and forth and extend and people do that all the time. They used to do that for same-sex couples routinely before marriage was legal. Um, so it's it's completely common, okay? And so they're, they're used to that. But if that person is married, um, they're, they're not gonna allow it. So some other ways to get significant people in your household to come in, um, uh, you can sponsor them for a green card through an employment petition. So if you know you're here with a company or you're starting a company or you have a business in the United States or a friend has a business in the United States that wants to hire the significant person in your household, you can go um, that way. You can also incorporate your household and hire a nanny. Um, people do that. Um, I'm not in any way, shape or form advocating that you circumvent immigration laws. That would be wrong. Um, but if this is true and this is your circumstance, yeah, it's gonna then be a tough you one. can do it. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I've done it, Annie. <laughs> Whatever. Call me. Ed Ed <laughs> Eduardo from South America. I'm a golfer, and my dream is to play on the PGA Tour. Um, I have gone to the consulate. I'm not quite sure what type of visa because I have a tournament that's coming up in the U.S. that I'd like to participate in. Can you give me some advice? So Eduardo, being a golfer myself and following the PGA Tour for a long time, there's a special provision in the B1 regulations that allow for you to come to the United States and to participate in the tournament. So when you go to the consulate, you want to have your ranking, you want to have your information to show that individual exactly that you're playing on the tour uh, in South America, and then you want to show the schedule for the upcoming tour and they've chosen you to come and participate in that tour and you've qualified so they can issue you what's called the B1 visa. Good luck and hit them straight, keep it on the short grass. Little known secret about Humberto Gray, he's not just a golfer, he's a very good golfer and... Mm, at times. <laughs> you were on the professional tour in the Dominican Republic. Yes I was. Whatever, he's good. Um, okay so this one is for, uh, from, this one is from Portia Amanqua. I hope I'm saying that right. Hello, ma'am, please. What if we never live together after marriage? Okay. I'm not sure what the circumstance is here. I don't know if you're talking about marriage to a United States citizen or a marriage to someone else in your home country and you're worried about questions about that. The reason why I decided to answer this question is because someone, one of our um, YouTube viewers, replied to you and gave you advice. Um, which is difficult to do when you don't have more information. So I just want to, as a, as, just to give you a bit of advice. If it's not from me, if it's not from Grey Law TV, if it's not from Umberto, I can't vouch for that. Okay. So whatever advice you hear outside of that, take it with a grain of salt. Um, if it's from us, again, it's not legal advice, but it's from lawyers who specialize in this area. So you can you, you can listen to it mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. and and do some research and, and I would highly advise that you get um, a lawyer of your own, uh, a very competent lawyer to help you um, with difficult situations. Um, but when, you know, just folks are just replying and giving you advice on YouTube, um, be careful, okay? I'd like to add, you know, there are, it's an interesting question because there are some circumstances you know where the individuals are married and they're not living together mm -hmm. because of circumstance maybe right. employment you know he got a job in new york and she's in school at ucla mm -hmm. in california mm -hmm. as long as you can explain the reason for you not living together right. which is normally the case for married people right you know in some circumstances in some okay, yeah. yeah so i don't know if like you got married and then he went back to the united states and you're trying to figure out how to come in mm -hmm. um i don't know if you're separated and don't plan on getting back together um, I mean, in that case, you cannot file a marriage petition. Um, but um, you know, depending on the circumstances, um, there's always there's always a way around. You're gonna be <laughs> fine. Thanks for watching Grey Law TV, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Hi, this is Courtney with Grey Law TV, and today we're gonna talk about the interview at the airport with customs. So congratulations, you went to the consulate, you got your visa, or maybe you're here on a visa waiver, and you've just been on a really long flight, and now you're gonna talk to customs, okay? And even though you have your visa from the consulate, even though you've just been on this long flight, they can still deny you from walking out of the airport and into the United States. So it's important that you are prepared 
for the interview with customs. So again, be calm. Best advice I can give you is to be calm, be personable, make eye contact, be polite. Um, you're, you know, you're tired and you're in another line and you're so close to your goal. Um, but now is the time to just be really, really kind to be organized. I know you've just gotten off an airplane. You might not know where your passport is and which pouch or which pocket you've been moving stuff around, but make sure that you have it ready because the first thing that they're gonna ask you is, may I see your passport? and you don't want to fumble and annoy them. They have a line of 100 people behind you that have also just gotten off that flight. Um, have it ready, hand it to them, and speak, okay? Start that conversation. Say, oh, here you go, or here's my passport, you know, um, and show them your passport. You might even want to have it open to your biographic page. They love that because they, can, they don't have to start flipping and fumbling through. So be ready to go when you get to the front of the line. Make sure you say hello, okay? Just say, oh, hey, you know, here's my passport, here you go. The next question is how long do you tend to stay? Okay, you have your ticket in hand, you should have a return flight, right? You know how long you're staying. Um, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, whatever the case may be, that's what you tell them, okay? And it should match up with your allotted period of stay given you uh, by the um, consulate and it should match up with your flight itinerary. What is the purpose of your visit? And that's if you're traveling for business or pleasure. Oh, I'm going to the Grand Canyon. I'm going to Coachella. I'm, you know, I'm visiting my sick aunt. Whatever it is, you just let them know simply, um, concisely. Don't be long-winded. Keep it short, but give them the information that they're asking for and try not to give them any more because they're really trying to get folks through as quickly as possible. When they ask you what the purpose of your visit is, if you're here to visit friends, um, you know, you've you've watched the B1, B2 interview, you've done very well. And so um, if you're here to visit friends, they're gonna start getting at that boyfriend question again. Make sure that you're not here to get married. Um, you know, are you coming here to marry your girlfriend? Do you have a ring in that bag? You know, that kind of thing. They, they wanna make sure that you're not coming in to stay. If they get the idea that you're here to stay and don't think, oh, I got past the consulate and now I'm going to tell them that I, you know, I've decided to get married in the last two weeks. Now is not the time, okay? You need to, show that your intent is to return okay you have your return flight you're here for a reason it should you know you've gone through this before with the consulate and so just do the same thing again okay what do you do what's your occupation um so you let them know you know i'm i'm a waiter i'm a physicist whatever it is um you tell them do you have any family in the u.s if the answer is no you're done if the answer is yes you tell them who um, you know, you're arriving at LAX. Oh, I have an aunt in, in Missouri. I'm not visiting her. I'm going to Disneyland, you know, like not on this trip, maybe another trip. If you are visiting a relative and they and you're staying at their house, um, you probably want to be able to give them the address. So yeah, I'm staying at my, my aunt's house. She lives in Santa Monica. Um, you know, if they ask for the address, you can give it or you have it handy. Um, but they, they probably won't. I mean, they may, they may not. Um, but just make sure that you're not nervous um, that you don't seem antsy because that gives them pause and and there is a possibility that they'll take you into what's called secondary inspection i know umberto's done a great video on secondary inspection um, it, it can be time consuming they can put you in secondary for two or three hours and ask you a lot of questions and look at your phone and take your phone and take your computer and look at everything in it so make sure your phone and your computer are clean and that you watched umberto's uh, video there's nothing on there that's going to cause you any kind of embarrassment um, and um, you should be fine but also when you're in secondary i know you just got off a long flight and you're super tired and this is the last thing you needed and you may have had plans and now they're getting messed up i i wouldn't express my displeasure too much to the officers okay um just it, it is what it is and you're gonna have to get through it and if you're unkind or if you say can i get out of here i've been in here for two hours if you're unpleasant at all they'll keep you even longer like so just get through it, okay? Are you traveling alone? Either the answer is yes or no. Um, no, my husband's with me. Uh, no, my kids are with me. No, my parents are with me. Whatever, it is, they're here. Or um, if, you're, if you're traveling with someone who's on a different flight, um, yeah, they're coming in on a later flight, or you know, you just let them know um, who's traveling with you, okay? Have you been in the US before? Um, so if you've been in the U.S. Um, and you, you know, just tell them. I came in when I was five to go to Disneyland with my parents. Um, you know, that was like 20 years ago. 
Um, if you came in um, a few weeks, I came in for business meetings last year, or I come in, I come in for business meetings like once a quarter. You know, you just let them know how often because they can see it, right? They <laughs> they have all your information right in front of them, so they just want to make sure that it all matches up, that you feel confident in it, that you feel, um, you know, like you're in the right place, that you're not nervous, that you're not telling them anything that doesn't match other things. They want to make sure that you're telling the truth, that you're where you're supposed to be, that you're confident, that you're personable, and so you know, make eye contact. Uh, where will you be staying? Um, so let them know the hotel. Here's my here's my. Uh, confirmation of my booking um, or I'm staying in an Airbnb or I'm staying with my aunt this is her address um, or I'm staying with friends that can also get into the boyfriend girlfriend thing um, but you know you just let them know you know we've been dating for I don't know six months she visits me I visit her you know we just go back and forth you know we're not if you want to bring up the M word you can like we're nowhere near marriage but you know we're, we're just we're hanging out right now you know we don't you know Whatever. So they ask you like, do you plan on getting married? No, 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 definitely not. Like she hasn't even met my parents. Like we're so far from there. Make sure you have uh, your flight itinerary handy. Make sure you have your hotel or your, your aunt's address handy. Um, and be cool, calm, collected, personable, competent. I mean, you don't have to be, they expect you to be in your sweats. You were just on a flight. So don't feel like you have to get, you know, fancy on the airplane or anything. You're, it would probably be weird if you like walked up to customs like in a three-piece suit. So just be yourself. Um, that's all they're looking for and you'll be just fine. Uh, thanks for watching Grey Law TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Courtney from Grey Law TV and today I'm gonna to answer a few of your questions. I have a question here from Kira Gassel and she said, um, what if like in my case I'm a student and my boyfriend's family wants to meet me and invited me to join them on their vacation? They're willing to cover my expenses. Would the consulate approve my visa uh, even if I'm a student? Um, the fact that you're a student could actually be helpful to this situation. You can show that you are enrolled in school, that you're taking a vacation, and that classes resume on whatever date. So you would take um, something from your school showing that you're enrolled in the next semester of courses and that you have ties to, you, you know, you have an apartment, you have bank accounts, you have lots of ties to your home country. Um, I don't know if your boyfriend is a United States citizen and lives in the United States and you're coming to visit him and his family and go on a vacation and they're going to pay for you. That can be tricky. Make sure you check out the B1, B2, what they're going to ask you at the consulate um, video for that one. I talk about that quite a bit. Um, I don't know if your boyfriend goes to school with you abroad. Maybe he's doing a year abroad. You live in Spain and he's in Granada with you for uh, a year and so he's going on vacation like for Christmas break or whatever you guys are you know for winter break you, you're going to travel to the United States to go skiing in Aspen and then you're both going back to school so you could show that you know you're both enrolled in school you're going out and coming back I wouldn't take one of those sponsor letters they're going to want to know that things are are paid for um, so I don't know if you could show um, money in your bank account or tell them that Maybe in this particular case, when you have a, a, a trip that's going to be paid for, you can take a letter from a boyfriend's parents. I'm a little iffy about that. I wouldn't show it to them unless you know they specifically ask for it. I would just explain like, hey, I'm you know going on vacation with my boyfriend and his family is like covering the bill for everything. It's super cool. Uh, if they ask, do you have evidence of that? Then I would show them that letter that says, you know, my, my son and his girlfriend are flying out. 
um, we're going to Aspen, we're taking care of their accommodations and flights and, you know, and then their flights back home, okay? This is a question from somebody who didn't leave their name. Do I really need to show my hotel reservation to the officer even if I have not planned anything about it? No, you don't need to go out and get a hotel reservation or book a flight um, or do your conference res registration if you're going to a conference. Um, if you have those things, if you're, you know, if the company that you work for registered five people from their company for, um, for a conference in the United States and they want you to be one of those people, then you would take uh, proof of the five registrations and a letter from your company stating that they would like you to be one of the participants. Um, if you do for any reason have a flight, you know, you got a refundable flight because, you know, it's there's a wedding happening in two weeks and it just came up, your brother's getting married, he's eloping, he wants you to be there and you bought your fight because you just know that this is going to happen and it's refundable in case you don't get your um, your visa but you got it because the prices were low and you didn't want them to go up uh, before your interview. You know, in that case, then yeah, take, take um, you know, I got a flight, it's two weeks, I have the return ticket booked already for two weeks, um, you know, after I arrive and, and that could be helpful to you but I wouldn't go out, they don't expect you to have it. It would be an unusual circumstance, but if you do have it, it can be helpful. Okay, next question is from um, Tariq Tarek. Um, what do you need to do if you're already outside the US and you have a 10 year bar and you have a US citizen spouse and your I-130 is proofed? What you need to do, Tarek, is get a very good lawyer. Okay. There are ways around bars depending on the circumstances. There are waivers available, but it really depends on your very particular situation and you're going to need help. Um, so what you would do is you would go through the usual process and then that uh, lawyer would help you file a waiver either in advance of your consular interview or at the consular interview. You could take the waiver with you. Sometimes you think you need a waiver and you actually don't. Um, and so if you go to the consular interview, the officer will say, um, you know, here's your, your visa, congratulations. Um, or they'll say, you know what, you need a waiver because X, Y, and Z happened and at that point you can submit a waiver. So um, in that situation where you have real sticky sort of issues that are particular to you, um, you were in the United States without status and left, it sounds like that's what's happened, um, I would consult a reputable immigration attorney. So thank you for watching Grey Law TV. I really love seeing your questions. Keep sending them in um, and let us know what you would like to see and we'll do some uh, segments on that. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey there YouTube, I'm Berto Grey from Grey Law TV. Guess what I'm gonna discuss today? You've probably heard about the lottery. Lottery to get a green card. So the diversity lottery uh, is an application that you make online. It's absolutely free, okay? Now, it's an application that if you're chosen, it's just like a lottery. If you're playing the California lottery and you win a million dollars, it's the same thing. And the intent of the diversity lottery uh, was to diversify the US. What they do is they choose individuals from countries where there's low amount of individuals that are entering to the United States. So you might want to check the government website and determine whether or not your country is one of those countries. Now, very simple. The first thing is there's a lot of scams about the lottery. You got to be careful. It's free. You don't need to pay money. What you want to do is you want to go state.gov diversity. That's the website. If you're not in the government website, it's not real. Don't do it. Now, the website is really good. It's set up for applications online. Everything is online, which is perfect. So what you do is you submit an application. Very simple. If you're chosen, then what you need to do next is you need to start preparing documentation, okay? And you have to do this quickly. Why? Because there's only 50,000 individuals that get to come in annually on the lottery. So if you're not on time, you may lose your spot. You gotta confirm first your qualifications. You need to have at least a high school diploma or two years of work experience, okay? If you qualify, then you have to go online and complete a form called the DS-260. You have to submit that, then they will instruct you to submit further documentation, birth certificates, marriage certificates. Now, 
your family is included in the diversity. If you're chosen, your family can come along with you. That is a spouse or children under 21. You have to submit separate applications for each individual. Now, it may seem like, well, why am I going to apply for the lottery? Listen, every year I have at least two or three clients that are chosen and they get green cards through the lottery. So it's not hard. Click on, try, submit it, see if you're chosen, uh, and just follow the instructions. Now, also, um, it's set up where you can check your status. There's an online portal where you can check your status if you're chosen. So it's really easy, it's efficient. So last year, there were 25 million registrants and 50,000 were chosen, obviously. So, I mean, those aren't bad odds because there's 8 billion people in the world. I think you, you click on and you try, you make an application, it's free. It doesn't take you much time. So a lot of people think if they're gonna get the lottery that they need to submit millions of applications. Not true. Remember, if you submit more than one entry, you will automatically be denied. So don't submit millions of entries. It's not gonna work. Now, if you're chosen, it's very tricky. You can do two things. You can pick up your green card here in the US or you can pick up your green card in your home country. There's no requirement that you be physically present in the US. If you're in the US, you'll do what's called adjustment of status. We have other segments we'll talk about the adjustment of status uh, process. And then there's consular interviews. That's another segment as well. We'll talk about what happens when you're picking up your green card at the US consulate abroad. Thanks for watching Gray Law TV. Click below, like, and subscribe. Hey guys, this is Courtney and Umberto with Grey Law TV. Yes, we'd like to give a shout out to all of our subscribers who have posted some really good and interesting questions. So basically, we are gonna answer your questions live on this segment. Hopefully you'll get some good information. And uh, we really thank you for watching Real TV. So this one's from Isadora. So if I put on my DS-160 that I'm traveling with someone else who is my girlfriend and she already has a visa, should I take the visa print from her passport or will they know that? So when you're going in for your interview, just concentrate on yourself and your documents and your information. They'll ask you who you're traveling with you could say my girlfriend. There's really no need to have a copy of her passport or a copy of her visa or anything like that. Um, and, and again, all these things are in their system, so they probably can see it. But just concentrate on your information um, and you should be good to go. D. Wow, my interview is tomorrow and I'm a bit terrified. But after watching this video, it really boosted my confidence. That is a great comment and that's a testament to Courtney's video for B1B2. If you haven't watched it, you need to click on that segment and you need to watch. It'll help your confidence. It'll help you know and be confident on what you need to bring to that interview and what takes place in that interview. So, good luck. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. So this is from Manish. Hello ma'am, I'm from Nepal. I was rejected once and then I took my interview date again. Many students are rejected here because they haven't changed their university. I even didn't want to change my university. So sir, I just want a perfect answer. If the officer asks what changes have you made um, from your first interview. So I just want to clarify this. This is a myth. You do not need to change your university. That is not what went wrong. Okay, something else went wrong. And um, take all the documents and information that they're requesting. There's nothing wrong with the university. Your university is fine. Uh, it, it's just a matter of giving them what they're asking for and doing a really sort of nice interview where you're short and sweet and to the point and you don't look nervous and um, you're not uh, giving them information or, or things that they're not asking for. Like, should I change my university? Would that help? You, know, you don't want to say that. Um, you just want to, you know, everything that you have is absolutely correct. And you just want to give it to them with confidence. This is Hans. What if I already bought my flight ticket coming back and forth to the U.S.? Then I get denied the visa. I already paid for the ticket. Am I going to lose that money? Absolutely. You're going to lose that money. You really don't need a plane ticket. You need to concentrate on the information that you do need. You need to show employment. You need to show bank accounts. You need to show property. You need to show ties to your country. Um, 
if you feel comfortable, certainly you can get an open-ended ticket that's not paid for. You can show an itinerary. Uh, that's just fine, but save the money. Mm -hmm. Or a refundable ticket. That works too. Yeah. Um, so this one is from Rivali. Um, Hi ma'am, my boyfriend, he applied for us for a B2 visa and he didn't, uh, this is all personal information, I'll skip on over that, mm -hmm. um, but basically she's, she's afraid because her boyfriend's going in for the visa, she already has the visa stamp in her passport and she really wants to travel with him, I get it. Um, take a deep breath, okay, he's going to be fine. Everything is in order. He has all the documents and information that he needs. He has, um, he knows how to answer all of the questions. He's watched our videos mm -hmm. and it's all going to be fine. So just give him the support that he needs. Maybe you can do some mock interviews with him and ask him the questions and see how he does um, so that he's really comfortable once he gets there. Okay, so good luck with that. So the journey, this is a really, really good comment uh, that came in on our YouTube channel. This video helped me tremendously. Just keep your answers quick and short. Don't volunteer information. Don't lie. Have respect, smile, be comfortable. Don't slouch. Always look them in the eye when they're speaking to you. That's a great comment. Very important when you're going to that interview to abide by those rules. That's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. You should make a YouTube video. <laughs> okay, so this one is from Chris Clark. What's the difference between a B-1 and a B-2 visa? That is a really, really good question. The B-1 visa is for work-related travel. Now, it does not mean that you can work for a U.S. company in the U.S. This is, you work for a company abroad, they're sending you in for a meeting, for a conference. Um, you are a golfer and you're coming in for a competition. We have other segments on the B-1, B-2, so make sure you take a look at that and we go through exactly how, how and why you can come in um, on the B-1. The B-2 is for pleasure so it's vacation it's Disneyland it's the you know going to see New York or the Grand Canyon so um, those are the differences between the B1 and the B2 pieces all right YouTube well thank you for watching click below like and subscribe and again I'd like to give a shout out to our subscribers they are enjoying our content so if you haven't subscribed click below and do that thank you bye YouTube. bye <laughs> bye guys